Hello, I am Zarkoon, this is World of Worship Legends. On the screen, you see my build for Jojo. Got Cunningham and Ciliax as inspirations. And this is a full offensive accuracy kind of build that we've got here on this commander. I'm using him on the tier 5 premium French battleship Dunker K. Um, Dunkirk, I guess, right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm I was just kind of trolling you guys who want to give me all your stern talkings to about my mispronunciation of French words. This one I can pronounce. It's the Dunkirk. And this is the first game that I have ever played in the Dunkirk. It happened the other day on the Hivehound stream with our special guest, Will. Uh, more on that, you could look at my stream on Monday, which followed the Hivehound stream after it had to be cut short. And you can find out, if you'd like, why Will was our special guest. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Instead, what I'm here to talk about is this Tier 5 Dunkirk, which is a solid ship. Uh, I ended up having a pretty good game here, and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. But there are some peculiarities about this ship that I think you should be aware of should you decide to purchase it, and I suspect a fair few of you might be inclined to purchase it this week, given that the Ezer Lane stuff is back in the store, and you can get the Ezer Lane Dunkirk Commander, and you could get the Dunkirk, and I think the Dunkirk's Ezer Lane Camo, which personally I'm not a fan of, not wearing it here, it makes it look kind of like a ridiculous fantasy hospital ship. But there, our first shot on the war spite hits him for two citadels, 25k. Excellent opening salvo, first one I've ever taken in the Dunkirk. So immediately, I was like, okay, this ship seems pretty good. Let's talk a little bit about the main guns, though. They are small. There are eight of them. They're situated in two super-firing turrets on the front, much like the Richelieu and the Jean Bart. Except both the Richelieu and the Jean Bart have 380 millimeter guns. The Dunkirk's guns, comparatively, are much smaller. And in fact, the Dunkirk's guns are smaller than the Tier 5 Tech Tree French battleship Normandy by 10 millimeters. Normandy has 340 millimeter guns. The Dunkirk has 330 millimeter guns, which I think I haven't, you know, done a comparison across all the tiers, but I think that gives the Dunkirk the smallest guns at tier 5 in terms of battleships or at least close to the smallest. They're not very big guns. Nevertheless, they are French guns, which fire French armor-piercing. And the French, I think, have excellent penetration characteristics, especially if you're going to use Jojo as the commander or an inspiration for a different commander. And they have incredible shell velocity, which means that even though these guns are comparatively tiny, they can pack a punch. You see here, we have done 40,000 damage so far, and we're like, what, four minutes into the match? So, off to a pretty great start. This pair of Warspite bees out here is also giving me nice broadsides to shoot at, so we hit that one for 11k and 4 penetrations. The dispersion and shell grouping on that shot was beautiful, and, you know, we're getting some effective volleys out of this. Now, the downsides about the Dunkirk. Well, it is a Tier 5 battleship, and it is as I was alluding to earlier, a bit like the Richelieu or the Jean Bart in its turret setup, maneuverability characteristics, and all that fun stuff. It can kind of fulfill the same role. 
The major difference is that the Jean Bart and Richelieu enjoy 32 millimeters of bow plating, or at least I think they do. Can't confirm that for 100%, uh, but I doubt their armor value is lower than that. Maybe one day we'll get an armor viewer in the screen or in the game so that I can analyze the armor layout of ships much more effectively without having to do any guesswork. In any case, the point is the Richelieu and Jean Bart, with their 32mm bow armor, are perfectly capable of stopping 15-inch guns and 16-inch guns from penetrating their bows. The same is not true of the Dunkirk here. At tier 5, it is in a position where it will often see 15-inch guns. There are a number of tier 5 battleships that have them, including the Warspite, the Bayern, and the Queen Elizabeth. There might be one other that I'm forgetting to mention. I don't think so, though. And then if you get up-tiered into a tier 6 game, almost all of those battleships have 15-inch guns, except for the Leon and the Scharnhorst, both of which have smaller guns. Oh, and the King George also has smaller guns at 356 millimeters. But the rest of them have 15-inch guns, and some of them, like the Sinop and the Colorado, have 16-inch guns. I suppose the Mutsu at tier 5 also has 16 inch guns. So there's a lot of stuff out there that is going to be able to overmatch the Dunkirk's bow armor, meaning I think you probably have to play it very carefully. Now this New Mexico, he has what, 356 millimeter guns, I think? These are not going to overmatch my bow armor. I can bow tank him all day. You see he hits my bow and does no damage. Meanwhile, he's giving me flat broadside, so I'm able to do damage to him. Unfortunately, I'm giving the Warspite flat broadside. And luckily, the Warspite elects to shoot HE at me, which prompted me to say during the stream, why would you ever want to shoot HE in the Warspite? But I guess if you've got a destroyer chasing you down, maybe switching to HE isn't that much of a problem. Our responding shot to him misses him, and one shell ricochets off of him, which is not ideal, not what I was looking for. I would have liked to have uh, secured that kill. Alas, it was not to be. So now I am pushing more toward this cap here and this New Mexico. You can see that our situation is somewhat dire. The enemy team is ahead of us on points. They have three caps to our one, but the ship count is very close. Unfortunately, the Hive Hound in the Gallant goes down to the enemy Gata after that Gata and the other enemy destroyer sort of ganged up on him. So we have lost the Hive Hound. We have one destroyer left, and our special guest, Will, I think, is pushing up here with me. Unfortunately, that other destroyer is going to come around. And, of course, I have turned into a situation where there is a Queen Elizabeth shooting at me. And, of course, the Queen Elizabeth, like the War Spite, has 15-inch guns. And you saw right there how the shells went straight through my bow armor and hit me for over 7k. So, this is, you know, it's much like my very favorite battleship, the Nelson. But in the Nelson, you can certainly mitigate the damage that 15-inch guns are capable of inflicting on your bow by properly angling the ship and inviting the shots to hit your side armor instead of your bow. Whether you can do the same thing on the Dunkirk here and how good the side armor is when it is angled, I'm not sure and I don't know that we get a great example of it here. We are angling primarily against the Queen Elizabeth. We don't have to worry about the New Mexico as long as he continues to shoot the bow of the ship. And unfortunately, I am going to back into 
our special guest Will there. Uh, not, not good. Sorry about that, Will. Anyway, uh, trying to retreat here from this situation. Maybe get the finishing shot off on the New Mexico, but Will does it for us. He is not on the most health ever, though, and here comes the enemy Jaguar. Uh, looking to torpedo Will into oblivion. Unfortunately, he succeeds. Will goes down. This is three versus three now, and two of the remaining enemy ships are destroyers. I can't shoot at the Jaguar. He disappears behind the island, but he is on low health. So instead, I return my focus to the Queen Elizabeth. And here I am angling against the Queen Elizabeth, trying to invite his AP shells to hit my side armor and do no damage. Luckily, the accuracy on that Queen Elizabeth isn't top notch. Whether the player's just not aiming quite right and leading the shots, good for me. We're doing some nice chunk damage on his broadside, though. He's decided he's had enough of that, so he is angling away. We nearly take him out there with that salvo. He's got just a sliver of health left. This should be enough to do it unless he goes down to the cruiser first, and he does, just before our shells reach him. Just kidding, it wasn't a cruiser, it was the tier 5 French destroyer. And somewhere in the mix of all that, the other enemy destroyer went down, leaving only one enemy destroyer left alive on the team here. So, there are two things that could happen that final enemy destroyer simply could sail away and perhaps he would win based on the point situation. We do have a friendly cruiser flipping the cap in our spawn. I don't know whether we could make up the points difference in the amount of time that is left if we flip the caps and that destroyer runs away. In any case, I don't think he's going to run away at all. He might be running away from me, though. Uh, but we are going to, I think, maybe hunt him down before this game ends. As far as it goes, though, the Dunkirk seems like a fairly solid Tier 5 battleship. Although, with its bow armor that can clearly be overmatched by 15-inch guns, it does mean you can't play it as maybe aggressively or recklessly as you could the Richelieu, for example. And I think, based on what little I've read about these historical warships, that the Dunkirk and Richelieu were actually designed to operate in tandem for the French Navy. Which, little interesting factoid, don't know why I'm telling it to you, but, you know, there you go. Anyway, you can't play the Dunkirk as aggressively as the Richelieu or the Jean Bart because only the Yamato can overmatch the bow armor of those two ships, and a lot of ships can overmatch the bow armor of this one. So it is, I think, going to require some careful maneuvering, perhaps some strategic placement of the ship behind island cover and all that kind of thing. And in fact, actually, if we look at the point situation here, we've got a minute 45 left to go. We are flipping the, you know, remaining caps. The destroyer has announced his presence in the alpha cap, so I am going to turn that way because it does increasingly look like we are going to need to kill that guy in order to secure the victory here. I think it's very possible that the timer runs out and the enemy team still wins on points. Which, again, is a nice reminder that in domination mode, the caps are everything. Sorry if you hear any noise in the background. I think my cat is messing with stuff. The caps are everything. You win domination modes primarily by securing a majority of caps. And that is what the enemy team has done here. The Jaguar had this game in the bag. Unfortunately, he gets spotted. I get the kill on him. And we win the game. 
So there's a look at the Dunkirk for you. Hope you enjoyed it. If so, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.